I was out and about a little today, and it's getting a little crazy around here. <laughs> a little excitement up there, Gary. There's very little down here. There's, there's nobody in the stands yet. The kickoff isn't set until 7.05, and uh, they're not expecting a sellout here, but there are a lot of Husker fans who made the trip down for this, the first game for Nebraska since winning the national championship last January in Miami. Oklahoma State, a real unknown this year. They have a brand new head coach and several new assistant coaches, and they appear to have some new systems put in on offense and defense. So Tom Osborne doesn't know what to expect from them tonight. But we did talk to Bob Simmons, the head coach of the Oklahoma, Cow Oklahoma State Cowboys, and he knows what to expect from Nebraska. I prefer to open up with this. This, this is, I like the challenge. You know, uh, I, I guess uh, man, maybe afterwards, after the game, you ask me that question, I say, well, well you may be right. Uh, but I just come from a system and a program where it's right or wrong that has been built on playing and competing with great challenges. Uh, and we won some and we lost some. Uh, and I think as, as we get our, our, our talent here in, increases uh, and we build that mindset that we, we like to play in those games like that, I think ultimately we, we end up w winning our share. Lots of people wondering what's going to happen tonight. How will the Huskers react to their first game since the national championship game? And how will Oklahoma State react with their uh, new head coach and lots of new systems in down here? You were saying that it is a, a warm night down here. It is hot out here on the field. Let me show you just how hot it is, Gary. It was nice and cool when we left Omaha earlier today. I'm going to put this piece of ice right here on the turf, next to the turf, and watch. almost completely melted in about five seconds that's really hot down here on the field and conditioning will be a real topic down here Gary Sue yeah maybe some fans on the sidelines thank you David <laughs> and we'll be right back with a look ahead to tonight's six o'clock league and on the way to the break a check of the reminders board a reminder to check out our Husker season preview show that's live from Stillwater 6 30 to 7 right here on channel 6 for our six o'clock lead tonight I went out and I sampled a little bit of that uh, here is where a lot of it was going on. This is a store called Husker Heaven, and I'll tell you, it was jam-packed at 10 o'clock this morning. Unbelievable. It People is. still don't have all their Husker stuff. Oh, even they after don't last have it. Year. Some of them even come back during the halftime, I was told, of tonight's game. Oh, just baby dressed in red. Huh? Because they don't get it all. All the babies, uh, everybody dressed in red. So. All right. Uh, getting ready for an exciting time tonight. The undefeated national championship for last year that we're sending away to a daughter in Arizona. As the Huskers prepare to defend their national championship, the fans are sparing no expense to show their pride. Tonight's 6 o'clock lead, Husker Mania, kicks into high gear. Good evening, everyone. Husker fans have been hungering for more since January 1st, and now the time has come. Nebraska Open season at Oklahoma State at 7 o'clock. And joining me now, magically, from Stillwater, Channel 6 Sports Director Dave Weber from News Star 6, our mobile newsroom. Dave, how is it down there? John, it is hot, and the heat is going to be the story of this game, at least as far as I'm concerned. It was 102 degrees the last time we checked, and out here on the field, it's got to be 20, 25 degrees warmer than that. So we've got Boyd Epley, Director of Athletic Performance for all the, the athletes at Nebraska. Boyd, how do you prepare for this kind of heat, or has it been that kind of summer that you can prepare for it? I think our team is probably more prepared for this kind of heat than we've ever been before, just because of the heat in Lincoln this summer and this fall. What kinds of things do you do to, to uh, you know, keep the fluids in the guys and make sure that, uh, make sure they don't get overcome by this? Uh, that's exactly what we do. We keep fluids in them throughout the day, make sure the trainers are around in case we have problems with the heat. We have had some problems. I, I won't say we haven't, but uh, overall I think the players have adjusted well and I think they'll be just fine tonight. We talked about the Orange Bowl last year, about how important conditioning was in the pregame show. And boy, it turned out to be that way. It's got to be the, the premier concern on everybody's mind down here. We've demonstrated power football in the fourth quarter, and uh, hopefully it'll be that way tonight again. This team that we have on the field is seven pounds heavier per man than they were last year, and uh, they've also had the best test scores in every single category that we measure. So physically, they should be ready to go. That's absolutely incredible. The, the weight goes up, and yet they don't lose any speed or quickness. A lot of that has to do with our new supplement program that Dave Ellis has put into place in the last year. We're real pleased with it. Thanks, Boyd, very much. Have a great game, huh? Thank you, Dave. Okay, say hi to the guys for me. Boyd Epley, Director of Athletic Performance. He says the Huskers are ready to go, and uh, we'll be back later in the cast, John, with some more uh, pregame activity. David, sounded like a few fans behind you there. Nebraska fans there in force. What do you think? 
Oh yeah, there, there's, there's a lot of Husker fans, and as you know, Husker fans always get to the game early. So let's hear it. Now well, they're more there than that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, we'll hear more from them later, I'm sure. All right, including all right. yourself. Thanks, Dave. You bet. Well, the hype that comes with the national championship has fired an already loyal Nebraska fan club, and Gary Kerr sampled some of that Husker mania that tonight's first game of the season is producing. And then getting a hat for my husband. He lost his hat, so we had to get a new one for tonight. That's Alan Guderian, and that's her daughter, Paige. She's ready for tonight, too. Gary Baker was checking out the T-shirts. Looks pretty good. What do you think? The store is called Husker Heaven, and it was jammed with people at 10 o'clock this morning. Behind the counter, Kathy McMichael was trying to keep up. It's been huge. It, it's like uh, a retailer's dream. It, it's, it's like Disneyland every day. Outside, the flags are flying. Although Herbie Husker was wearing a frown in this display over the plans for his demise. Mary Zimmer at Expresso Mary's was appropriately attired, getting people in the mood. Well, me and my daughter are going to sit home, watch, watch the game tonight. And, uh... The game, the season. It was all anybody was talking about on Tom Becker's show on KFAB this morning. It's going to be crazy in the house here tonight. Yeah. Uh, I'd, I'd recommend, uh, I think we're going to hide all the breakables, I think, before, <laughs> before game time here. A lot, lot, of, lot of pent up emotion, huh, Mike? Uh, yeah. Behind the bar, that's Kevin Blake getting ready for what they think will be an expensive night at Paulie's. Free shots every time the Cornhuskers score a touchdown. We expect a really good crowd. Just a lot of people here like the Huskers come down, and, you know, this has always been a good bar for football games. Big Husker fan, all right? He's even got his little red, red booties on. Back at Husker Heaven, Deb Ram has two-month-old Billy ready. Carolyn Gardner was checking out the hats and a lot more. Where are you going to wear all this stuff? Party. Party tonight? <laughs> yes. Amid the Husker mania with photographer George Jones, Gary Kerr, Channel 6 News. Wrapping up tonight's 6 o'clock lead kickoff is about 55 minutes away. The Huskers meet the Cowboys in Stillwater. We'll have a pregame show at 6.30 live from Stillwater. All of the highlights on 10 at 10 tonight. Next in sports, more on the Huskers season opener in Stillwater. That's after a Thursday stock check. Big Red 95 tonight at 6.30 only on Channel 6. Channel 6 for the Heartland presents Big Red 95, a preview of the Nebraska Cornhusker 1995 season. This Channel 6 Sports Special is sponsored by your Omaha area Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? The NFM Mega Mart and Priority One Fitness. Now, live from Stillwater, Oklahoma, here's Dave Weber. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Hot Lewis Field here in Stillwater, Oklahoma. Nebraska's football season kicks off about 30 minutes from now, but first, we're going to have a preview of this coming season of the national defending champions. The big question has been at quarterback. Would it be Tommy or Brooks starting? Well, we know now that Frazier got the nod from Coach Osborne. Ross Jernstrom has more now on Nebraska's starting quarterback. <laughs> The quarterback race turned out to be no surprise. Tommy Frazier was named the starting quarterback over Brooke Beringer just one week before the season opener. Frazier begins his senior season in excellent condition. Well, I feel I'm in the best shape right now, but I probably won't know that until at, to the game. You know, anyone can say they're in the best shape, but then when they get out there on the game situation, game circumstances, it, it could probably be, it'll be totally different. So right now, it's, I feel in great shape. I feel like I'm playing probably the best ball I ever played, but we won't know until the first game. Frazier is a better passer than last year. He threw for a record 228 yards in the spring game. Frazier has worked hard during the offseason on his mechanics and touch. He wants to improve on his career 45% completion average. I think I made a huge improvement, and that's just something that I really wanted to work on. I just want to really prove to the coaches that I can be a, also a great pass if I really put my mind to it. He's, he's thrown the ball quite well in the spring and fall camp, and uh, I think he's uh, learned when to take a little bit off the ball. Sometimes he just threw, threw everything like a rocket, and, and uh, sometimes with a short pass, you got to take a little bit off. So his touch is better and his accuracy is better. I think he's following through better. I think he saw a little bit of a difference in how he can still get the football there and still make completion by taking a little bit off on the football. And the ball's still going to get there and the defense is not going to bat it away or whatever. So he's made that adjustment by looking at the films and, and, and observing that and then going on the field, it's doing it himself. 
Frazier enters the 95 season as a Heisman Trophy candidate who was the hero in the Orange Bowl. The senior from Bradenton, Florida, is always a threat with his 4'6 speed and his quickness. But Frazier intends to share the spotlight with a Husker offense that is loaded with talent. I don't want to try to go out and try to do too much. I want to get the young offensive line a part of this, make them a good part of this team. I want to get them where they're, they're comforting in themselves. I don't want to got to try to do everything myself because I know I have a great supporting cast with Lawrence and then the receivers and try to get in, in an off, young offensive line that we have. I know that if we play as, as, one, as one unit, then we're going to be successful. So I just basically want to go out and just direct the team, not try to do too much on my own. Tommy Frazier led Tom Osborne to his first national title in January. Tonight could be the first chapter to his second crown. Ross Sternstrom, Channel 6 Sports. Tommy Frazier will start at quarterback, but Coach Osborne said Brooke Berenger will play at least six or eight plays in the first half. The big mystery on offense is not a quarterback running back. It's on the offensive line. Wiegert, Stey, Wilkes, and Zadiska are all gone, but the Huskers have reloaded up front. The offensive line is the big question mark this season. The only returning starter is Aaron Graham. But the all Big 8 center is an excellent centerpiece to build around this year. It, it's a different feeling in the leadership role. Uh, last year, we had, I mean, all, all five of us uh, had extreme uh, leadership and, and really demonstrated that throughout the whole year. And this year, you know, we only have one returning starter back, and they... Uh, throughout the summer and, and the spring, they really looked to me as a leader, and uh, you know I don't have any doubts in myself in, in taking on that role, and that's something that I'm I'm looking forward to doing. Last season's line averaged 295 pounds and led the team to its 11th national rushing title, but with the Husker pipeline gone, the responsibility now falls on senior guard Steve Ott, junior tackle Chris Dishman, and two sophomores, guard Aaron Taylor and tackle Eric Anderson. The new line is ready for the challenge. Last year's line was an exceptional line, and I know the whole nation can pretty, you know, can count on, I mean, take my word for that one, but uh, we, we waited our time, and I think we're ready to step in there and show Nebraska what we can do. Even though the offensive line may be short on experience, they may be ahead of last year's team in some areas of blocking, especially pass protection. When we came out of spring spring ball, I feel that we were a better pass protecting offensive line than we were at this time last year. Our feet work's really been good. I mean, this summer we came out here every day and worked on our feet work. And uh, during spring ball, I guess it showed that after winter condition, we worked on it too. But in spring ball, it really showed that you know we didn't give up many sacks in the spring game. I think Aaron was saying that we gave up less than what the, the first unit did last year in spring game. The offensive line will be in the spotlight all season. The question still remains whether this group can continue the same success of the past. Those guys sat behind four great linemen last year and had to watch every step that they made, and uh, they've been well seasoned. These kids, they haven't had a whole lot of playing time. Uh, some of them have played a little bit, but uh, they'll be ready to get out on the field and get the job done, that's for sure. There's some fans with a tribute to uh, Herbie Husker, huh? The offensive line will answer a lot of questions tonight. When we come back, a look at Oklahoma State and their new head coach, plus Lawrence Phillips, makes his run at the Heisman Trophy next on Big Red 95. For the best Big Red coverage all season long, watch Big Red Reports right here on Channel 6 every Husker game day. Only Dave Weber and the Channel 6 sports team bring you all the exciting action with Big Red Reports throughout the evening. Get full reports on the Channel 6 news at 5 and 10, plus bonus coverage with many reports during NBC primetime every Husker game day, only on Channel 6. Big Red Reports is sponsored by your quality Buick dealers. Nebraska's 1993 victory in Stillwater marked Coach Tom Osborne's 200th win. Big Red 95 continues now, live from Stillwater, with Dave Weber. Welcome back, everybody, to Lewis Field in Stillwater, Oklahoma. You know, it seemed everywhere you looked this summer, there was a picture of Lawrence Phillips on the cover of a sports magazine. Some believe he is the front runner for the Heisman Trophy. Well, John Chapman has more on the Husker Ibeck. Lawrence
Clarence Phillips opens his junior season as one of the favorites for the Heisman Trophy. Last year, he set a Big 8 record for the most yards rushing by a sophomore with over 1,700 yards. This season, the junior I-back is stronger and quicker. Phillips gained 15 pounds over the summer, so his body can withstand punishment on the field. I think the way it's going to help me with uh, running through tackles, I, I think I needed to run through tackles a little bit more, and the way that's going to help me do that this year. The way that came a lot of, uh, I did a lot of explosive lifts to help me with that, so I feel that that'll come around this year. Phillips' teammates have already noticed the physical changes in the Husker Ryback, who finished third among the nation's top rushers last year. As far as him, I think the extra muscle, the bulk that he pulled is going to help him a lot because last year he was taking a lot of poundage and toward the end season he started feeling it. But I think the extra weight that he's putting on now is going to give him the opportunity to go the whole season. No matter if he carries the ball 25, 30 times a game, he's going to be able to take the extra poundage with the extra bulk he has. The weight gain could help Phillips, especially since Nebraska lost four starters on the offensive line. Phillips knows the holes may not be as big to run through this season. They're smaller, but I think they're a little more uh, stockier bunch. And they look like they run pretty well, so I don't see any, you know, any problems with our linemen this year. It will probably be about two, three games before, you know, everything starts clicking perfectly. Recently, Phillips has been the subject of an NCAA inquiry involving a relationship with an agent. The controversy has not distracted Phillips from his goals of winning the national championship again this season. Uh, we're coming in, and, and it's time to get things started, so I'm getting focused now, and uh, I mainly just put everything else out of my mind and getting ready for the season to start out. The first step to the Heisman for Phillips will be tonight in Stillwater. John Chapman, Channel 6 Sports. Lawrence Phillips is going to get a chance to run right away. We were just told that the Huskers have won the toss and will receive and defend the far end or the west end of the field tonight. Phillips was cleared to play in the season's opener just two days ago. However, the NCAA is still investigating the matter. Oklahoma State is still trying to recover from recent NCAA restrictions. Last winter, Coach Bob Simmons was hired to turn the Cowboy program around. There's a new look in Stillwater this season. Bob Simmons takes over as head coach after spending the past seven seasons as the linebacker coach at Colorado. Simmons wants to instill a new attitude at Oklahoma State. Uh, if they don't go out and play their best, uh, they can get embarrassed. Uh, and no one wants to be embarrassed. That, uh, that the dedication, uh, that the hard work, that your work ethics has to change. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I've seen that in uh, a lot of players this summer. Simmons' new approach has already had an impact in Stillwater with the players. By Coach Simmons coming here with a new staff, it's like we're just starting everything over. And uh, we're, we came closer as a team. You know, we got that family going. We're like a unity now. And since he's gotten here, I mean, our expectations of winning are just that much greater. From him, we feel more closer now. We do a lot more things together. And of course, you know, you play together, so you should be together a lot. So, and, and we have, in the summertime, we have gotten, uh, we have made great strides to, to play like a family and be like a family. Jones is back for his third season at quarterback. Two years ago, he gave the Huskers a scare, but Nebraska pulled out a 27 to 13 win. Jones is looking forward to the return of the Huskers. It's gonna, it's gonna tell our football team what kind of team, first of all, we're gonna be. You know, either uh, it's gonna be hot, you know, and uh, of course they're the defending national champions. Are we just going to go out and play them just to stay with them, or are we going to actually go and try, to try and beat them? Simmons has a message for his players as they prepare to face the defending national champs. I'm going to tell them how you win the ball game. Yeah. All right? I mean, there are some things that are going to come to mind in terms of how we win this ball game, and those are scenarios that I'm going to go over with my football team. The Husker cheerleaders here in Stillwater to lend some support to their team. What a way for Bob Simmons to start his career here in Oklahoma. We're getting closer to the start of the season when we come back. The son of a pro football star makes his first start at Nebraska. And the Peter brothers lead the black shirts up front next on Big Red 95. Nebraska's current 33-game unbeaten string against Oklahoma State is its longest ever against a Big 8 school. Big Red 95 continues now, live from Stillwater. Here's Dave Weber. Welcome back to our Husker preview. Even though the defense lost seven starters, the black shirt should be strong again this season. Two brothers, Christian and Jason Peter, will provide the muscle up front.
The Peter brothers practice side by side every day. The elder Peter is Christian. His younger brother is Jason. This season, the black shirts front line will be a family affair. I think, he, you know, he looks up to me still. I still am his older brother. And, uh, you know, when I'm fired up out there, that gets him fired up. And vice versa. I mean, we both motivate each other. And, uh, I mean, we're just ready to, you know, hold each other's hands in that huddle and get going. You know, I have the, the most trust in Christian. I mean, I know when I look over there and I see him standing next to me, I know he's going to get the job done. You know, it makes everyone feel better, you know, when they know the guy next to them is doing what they have to do. And as long as all 11 guys do that, you know, there's no reason why you can't win games. And just as, you know, you just got to trust one another. The Peter brothers grew up together in New Jersey, but their childhood was not always perfect. When we were younger, like in grammar school and high school, we basically just hated each other. I mean, we fought every day, put our parents through, you know, hell. I mean, it was, it was bad. And, I mean, the day Christian left for Nebraska is the day I liked him. We started getting along. We've grown up all, all our lives together, and I can base, I know what he's thinking, and basically he knows what I'm thinking, and it's gonna, it's gonna be good working, working next to each other. I think. Christian has taken over as the leader on defense. Last year, he led the team in sacks. He's considered an All-American candidate with his speed and quickness. I'm gonna go out there, work my hardest, you know, and lead by example. And I think guys look up to guys who they could see you know training hard every day in practice and then you know playing good good in the game so I mean that those are the type of guys I looked up to like Terry Keneally last year Rainmakers year before that Perella so I, I think it it'd be unbelievable if we went back to back and also the you know being able to play side by side with my brother would be something I'd never forget The national anthem played by the Oklahoma State Cowboy Marching Band. And we're just minutes away from kickoff. Christian Peter has a lot of respect from his teammates. He was voted a co-captain along with Phil Ellis and Tony Bielan on defense. One of the new faces on the black shirts is linebacker Jay Foreman. Merlin Klaus has more on the freshman with a rich family tradition in football. His dad was an all-pro running back in the 70s, but now it's Jay Foreman's turn to shine. The redshirt freshman linebacker not only is playing in his first game tonight, he's starting. They probably want to test me out, you know, so hopefully I'll be up. To, I think I'll be up to the challenge. So, you know, when they, you know, the first couple games they'll try to run at me, and if I, you know, I step up like I'm supposed to be, like I probably will be, then they probably won't do it. They'll just probably think, you know, it's one of the guys. Foreman doesn't remember much from his dad's NFL days, but the former Minnesota high school star is well aware of them. Um, I was really used to it in high school because sophomore year I was already, in, you know, starting on varsity. So and they always tried to hold that against me, you know, always, you know, son of. So I'm pretty used to it. And then when I decided to come to Nebraska, they, you know, kind of like tried to rip me in the paper. So I was pretty much used to it when I already got here. So I'm used to it probably my whole life. I always be, you know, the son of no matter what I do. Jay Foreman seems to have a bright future in football, but following his dad to the pros isn't a top priority right now. I think me and my dad was talking, I think that I need to just come in and just establish myself right away, and then establish myself in the game. Then, you know, three or four years down the road, then I can talk about pro football, but not right now. I'm not even thinking about it. And Jay will have a great opportunity to establish himself tonight in Stillwater. Merlin Klaus, Channel 6 Sports. There's the sign. We'll work for Fiesta Bowl tickets. Go Huskers from Murray, Nebraska. Lots of vocal Husker fans here tonight. Jay Foreman and kicker Chris Braun are the only freshmen starting tonight. We're only minutes away from kickoff. When we come back, a homecoming here in Stillwater for a Nebraska player and a look at the Husker chances for another national championship. Next up on Big Red 95. Nebraska's Johnny Rogers set a Big 8 record for punt return yardage with 170 yards against Oklahoma State in 1971. Now, live from Stillwater, Dave Weber. Welcome back to Big Red 95, our, Husky season, our Husker season preview. One Husker will have his own cheering section tonight. Mike Mitter returns to his home state of Oklahoma after overcoming a serious knee injury from last season. The Oklahoma State game marks a homecoming for Mike Minter. He grew up in Lawton, Oklahoma. 
Minter was a hot prospect in high school after leading the state in rushing his senior year. He was recruited by the Cowboys, but decided to head north to Lincoln. When we had um, scheduled this game, I was I was real happy. You know, I was like, dang, I'm going back home the first game. You know, I get to go out there and play in front of my hometown a little bit. And, you know, that means a lot to me. Minter is making his first start since the second game of the 94 season, when he tore his ACL against Texas Tech. Minter missed the last 10 games after having reconstructive surgery. The injury is still a vivid memory. Well, um, at first, you know, you do think about it, and you, you're scared to get hit in it and, and all that, but right now, I don't, I don't even think about it. You know, it's just feel normal again, and, you know, I really don't even think about getting hit there again. <laughs> you know, you're always going to worry it might happen again, so you're always going to have that doubt, but, you know, you just got to overcome that and play yeah. ball. After missing a season of football, Minder has bounced back. Last spring, he worked hard in the weight room to remain one of the fastest players on the team. Well, I came back strong, you know, uh, my, my agility time will show that, you know, I, I got the fast agility time coming back and, you know, you're going to lose a couple of inches on your vertical, just, you know, because of the um, surgery and, you know, you might drop some, you know, tenths of a second or whatever, but um, all in all, I feel like it's, it's back. After watching from the sidelines last year, Minter just wants to be in on the action as the Huskers defend their national title. Well, I just want to go back to the national championship and play in the game myself, you know, get out there and show everybody what, you know, Mike can do out there too and just have the excitement just being on the field and, you know, playing in a big game like that. Um, that's, that's what I want. Mike Minter will have about 40 family members on hand from Lawton at the game tonight. Over the past eight months, Minter and the rest of the Huskers have basked in the glory of winning a national championship. But can they win it again? No school has done it for 17 years. Let's go back for a moment to New Year's night in Miami. Try to imagine what it must be like right now in Nebraska, where there are no major professional sports teams and no other major university within its borders. And in Lincoln now, and all across the Nebraska Plains, this first national title in a generation is a wonderful way to start this new year and a wonderful and crowning moment in the career of Tom Osborne. Nebraska national champion. As I'm concerned, we, we're as capable as anybody out there, and somebody's going to win the national championship this year, so that might as well be us. But uh, saying and doing it are two different things. Like Nebraska did it back in 72, is, is they were really focused the next year after it, and I hope our team can defend it well and, and not just spend everything on last year and go into this year as a defending national champion and trying to get it done this year. Once you do win it, the next year, people are gunning for you even more than they ever have before. You know, if they can beat Nebraska, you know, not only Nebraska, but a defending national champion, you know, that can make their season. You know, they can go one and 11, but if they beat us, hey, they're happy. We go out and look past the team that we know that we're going to be, but we look towards like a Colorado, Oklahoma then, and this team might ease up and beat us. So I, th I think our main goal this year is just to stay focused and play one game at a time. We return at the key positions. We return players who have been in the big games and, and uh, know what know uh, is expected of them through the whole year. And, uh, and I think uh, we'll have as good a shot as anybody at winning the thing this year. Well, and we'll, we'll be down sometimes in the game. So we're just going to have to fight through it and, you know, and play as a team and, and not get on each other's backs and just and, and love each other. Last time, any, last time anybody won back-to-back uh, -back national championships was Alabama in 78. And the toughest thing is just to win the first one. That's, that's, why, that's, that's why they don't win back-to-back. -back. <laughs> We're just moments away. The captains have come out on the field. And uh, what's the latest on uh, Damon Benning? Damon Benning, uh, Coach Osborne told us last night he had a hamstring injury and it was a bothering some. He was questionable for the game. He went through warm-ups. He is the backup I back to Lawrence Phillips. He is going to start the game. But he's still, they're going to see how it goes through the game. He may play one play. He may play the entire game. They're just going to see how it goes. The team is coming down the ramp. Roger, swing around here. 
Here come the defending national champions. Hey, it was a great show, Rossi. Thanks. On behalf of Ross Jernstrom, Roger Hamer, Mike McKnight, and Tom Youngblood, and our whole staff, thanks for watching Big Red 95, and go Huskers! Channel 6 Sports Special, Big Red 95, has been sponsored by your Omaha area Ford dealers. Have you driven a Ford lately? The NFM Megamart and Priority One Fitness.